Fox 5 and Hot 97 present Street Soldiers with Lisa Evers. I'm so glad you're joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on e-bike dangers. I'm your host, Lisa Evers. As e-bikes and scooters powered by lithium-ion batteries grow in popularity, so do the number of fires. With a death toll rising in New York City, there's an intensified focus on what can be done to keep everyone safe. This FDNY training video shows what happens when a lithium-ion battery overheats and ignites. There's an explosion that sends flames shooting out very fast. When the fire starts near an apartment front door, like it did in one Manhattan high-rise on November 5, 2022, residents couldn't get out and firefighters could not get in. So they bravely used daring rope rescues to get the family to safety. If anything, I think the public is not hearing how bad it is. I think there, uh, there's more fires, there's more fires closer to where people live than they realize. The fire that officials say began in an e-bike repair and battery charging business on June 20th claimed four lives and displaced dozens of residents. The safety worries are very real for the entire community, says New York City Council Member Christopher Marte. There's a lot of fear that the community has now. Uh, we have a lot of e-bike charging stations. We have a lot of businesses that have e-bikes being charged in them, and so people are concerned whether their building is next. There's an added danger from the smoke since the batteries are made with a petroleum-based plastic. They spread toxic chemicals into the air, causing a health risk for firefighters and anyone nearby. One partial safety solution underway is a joint city-federal plan to build 53 charging stations at NYCHA developments around the city by 2025. That would help delivery workers who typically need several batteries to get through a shift. I think that is very good initiative because uh, the administration, they, they, they want to support not only the delivery workers, they, they want to support all the communities. Unlike many other consumer products, there are currently no federal safety standards in place for these e-devices. Consumer Reports policy analyst Gabe Knight says buyers need to do their homework. Make sure they have a legitimate website. Make sure they're not a fly-by-night company. Um, consumers should check to see if the battery they're buying is third party tested by an accredited lab. Also, I would advise being extremely careful if you're buying secondhand batteries. Captain Farinacci gives these safety recommendations. We can't charge the bikes when we're not around them. We shouldn't charge the bikes overnight. We shouldn't leave them unattended. And we certainly shouldn't block our fire exit, our front door uh, when we're charging them. Let's go in depth on this important topic with our panel. Joining us is Christopher Marte. He's a New York City Council member representing District 1. District 1 is the includes the neighborhood of the Lower East Side, which has many delivery workers who rely on e-bikes uh, for their livelihood and also where the fatal uh, fire was recently that took four lives. So, Chris, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Got it. Thank you, thank you so much. Also with us is George Farinacci. He's the vice president of the Uniform Fire Officers Association and also a captain with the New York City Fire Department, FDNY. George, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. We appreciate it. Also with us is Gabe Knight. She's a policy analyst with Consumer Reports. She's been taking a look, very close look at what are the regulations that are there, the ones that are uh, blatantly missing. So we're going to find out a lot from her as well. Gabe, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having me. Thank you. George, I want to start with you because we need some basic facts about these, these battery fires. Are they as bad as we are hearing and they seem to be? I'll be honest with you. I think they're worse. Um, Let's see, I have, uh, in 2023, year to date, we had 110 fires uh, from lithium-ion batteries. 70 of those fires were linked directly to e-mobility devices. Um, there was 13 deaths associated this year, you know, to date. Uh, as opposed to last year, we had uh, two deaths and um, uh, 100 fires, 102 fires. So almost a similar amount of fires, but the death toll is rising. And then what makes what makes them so dead? What makes them so deadly and difficult? Because we've seen high rise, a daring high rise rope rescues to get people out who were trapped in the building. We've seen you know so many other things that have happened. The, the grocery store in the Bronx. We've seen the the one in our in Council Member Marte's district, where it was an e bike and a battery repair shop and charging station. What is it about them that makes it them so dangerous? Several factors. One of them is that they ignite so quickly. 
Um, and the nature of, of these immobility devices, for example, is people like to store them near the front door because who wants to traipse this thing through your entire apartment or house? So you leave it by the front door, you charge it, they take 12 hours to charge, and they're cutting off your means of egress. Um, you can't get out of the house. Uh, the fires don't go out. They often reignite. Um, even after it looks like they're out, they just start, uh, you know, bursting at the flames again, and they, and they they ignite very very quickly. So you don't have a chance to get out. All right, um, Christopher Martin, uh, City Council Member. Some legislation. There was a hearing in November of 2022 before the City Council, where there was a lot of testimony about this. There was a video presented by the fire department, a training video that shows that when these batteries ignite, they basically shoot flames out in many cases. Where do things stand now in terms of protection for people in the city? Yeah, so we passed a package of legislation that will to only sell certified ion batteries to hopefully get a lot of the illegal ones or uncertified ones or refurbished ones that haven't been taken care of properly off the market. And so that's the law of the land today. We also passed laws that will help track and give us data of how many actually are out there and how many are selling. So we can identify them and hopefully take them um, off the streets and off these uh, buildings. But how can you track them when like so, so many can be bought online or they can be bought there's, it's not like there's serial numbers, right? And I think this is why we need our partnership from the federal, state, and local level. And I think in the past few weeks, we have actually seen uh, all, all three entities come together and try to put funding and ideas together to make it safer to charge uh, these batteries because we know the popularity is only increasing. And we know people are ordering from delivery apps almost every single day. And so we really need to work in unison also with FDNY to make sure that even with the protected batteries that we're doing it in a safe location. All right, David, you've been research these, uh, researching these batteries and these battery fires and the devices for many months and have done a number of reports on it, extensive reports. What is the situation now? Because it seems like most of them are just completely un unregulated or uncertified. What, what is the state of things now? Right. So currently there are no federal rules for lithium ion batteries. There are voluntary industry standards for the batteries as well as for e-bikes, but many companies simply choose not to follow them. Uh, companies have cited costs as a major reason for not certifying to the voluntary standards, but that is a one-time expense and it doesn't necessarily add much, if anything, to a bike's individual cost. Um, in December, the Federal Consumer Product Safety Commission did reach out to over 2,000 e-bike makers and sellers and urge them to make sure that their products are safe or face possible enforcement action. Um, at this point, we just don't know if those manufacturers that have failed to follow best industry practices will change their course, start priori prioritizing safety, or if they will continue leaving consumers at elevated risk. Stay with us, there's more to come. George, one thing I wanna under, for people to understand, a lot of times we hear that this, these fires are starting while people are charging. And I've had conversations that people go, well, I'll charge my e-bike overnight. I'll plug it in. What could possibly happen? Explain that for us. So the batteries take uh, a long time to charge. So you need several hours. Nobody wants to babysit the battery while it's charging. If everything was perfect, and, and these batteries, by the way, they have a nickname of Goldilocks battery, because everything has to be just right for them to work properly. So if everything was perfect, your safety may go up. However, you know, batteries are often, uh, people are not using the correct chargers. People are not using the correct batteries. They're doing aftermarket products. This is not recommended. Um, in the uh, in these shops that we've seen these fires, what they do is they hobble together batteries from spare parts. Uh, they take cells out of one battery, put them into another battery, and then and then fasten them together. This is a recipe for a fire. This is exactly what's happening. So. Um, charging, um, ch charging these batteries uh, without being present by your front door. It's just, a, it's a recipe for disaster. It's a prime recipe for disaster. Gabe, what about it in terms of the, you know, when, when you get like a toaster oven or you get a coffee maker or something like that, I don't know, there's those, all those tags on the cords, you know, underwriters lab or certified by this or, or, or some other, some other thing, depending on the state. What, is there anything like that for these batteries? 
So unfortunately, there are a lot of bad actors out there that are taking advantage of the fact that we don't yet have mandatory rules for these e-bikes, these e-scooters, these batteries. Um, and the onus, of course, should not be on consumers to figure out if what they're buying is safe. Uh, it should be the manufacturer's responsibility to ensure that they are selling safe products in the first place. Uh, but given the current circumstances, consumers have to do their research. They have to be vigilant. I would say only buy from a well-known, reputable manufacturer. Make sure they have a legitimate website. Um, not here today, gone tomorrow. Um, and consumers should check to see if the battery that's used in their products has been uh, third-party tested by an accredited lab. Also, be extremely careful if you are buying secondhand refurbished batteries. Um, you might want to consider only buying from a certified mechanic. I know that's a great point. Was it for Marte, the, the fire that happened in uh, on the Lower East Side that took four lives in your district, that particular bike repair shop, they had a whole charging operation that was going that was going on for the delivery workers. Explain that to us. Yeah, so uh, we see these types of shops actually throughout Lower East Side and Chinatown where people don't want to charge it at home because it does take a long time or most delivery workers need to have three or four batteries just to do a 24 hour shift. And so while they're doing deliveries, they have other batteries being charged at these locations. We see that as a huge problem because we have some protected batteries and others not protected or uncertified batteries. And these buildings are not equipped to be charging all these batteries at the same time as well. And so we actually have been working with FDNY. They've been doing sweep throughout the community. Yesterday, they were at a shop on uh, Canal and Eldridge Street, another location that was just charging way too many batteries to make sure that that practice doesn't happen again. George, in, ter in terms of the enforcement, let's talk about that fire that was on the, the Lower East Side for a minute. The owner of the bar bike shop had been found guilty of using these illegal charging devices. There've been numerous visits by the FDMY there, but because of, I guess because it can be moved so quickly when they felt that there was, they were due for an inspection or were getting an inspection, they um, reportedly moved them out and then moved them back in or cleaned it up. And of course, after a tragedy like this, people are saying, we want more inspections, we want more inspections. But given the sheer number and volume of these devices and this, the, the exploding popularity of them ever since COVID, how practical is that? You know, uh, I actually live in the neighborhood as well, and the shops are everywhere. The um, the problem is the enforcement uh, doesn't give us the tools to address unsafe practices. We don't have enough tools in this. As, as Chris said, we're, we're playing catch up. Um, sometimes the process is slow, but we need state laws and city laws to be more tightly regulated, and we need them now because we shouldn't lose another life. Um, it, it's... Uh, They've tried to get these places shut down. I've had people call me up. Hey, listen, I have, I have some ghost kitchen operating in my uh, ground floor of my apartment building. There's 15 bikes in here. What can I do? And the laws are a little bit murky. Um, they're not getting expedient uh, enforcement is a problem. Would you support something like they have, for example, with the New York City Sheriff with the illegal, you know, with the um, unlicensed cigarettes or when they have these, these flavored vape, which are illegal technically illegal to be sold that are everywhere. They can confiscate them and find these, the stores that are selling them and hit them with very severe fines. Would that be some type of solution to look at? I, I think it would be great because th this is, it, it's shown to be a very deadly uh, option here to, to do nothing in, and we really need to address this. It's very unsafe. City Council Member Mark, what would you think of something like that? I, I think that can definitely help. Um, however, like we see with these illegal smoke shop that it's, they see it as a cost of business a lot of times, these right. high violations. And so it's making sure that uh, we try to close down the bad actors after a number of repeated offenses. And, you know, hopefully we can help the ones that, you know, made a mistake and direct them the right way, give them the right products, the ideas to make sure that batteries can uh, be charged safely at their establishments. But the ones that continuously the same bad practices, uh, we just have to make sure that they're not around. And Gabe, from, from what you were able to find, in terms of you say there's no federal legislation around this, have you, did you find anywhere where they are doing an effective job or is this just something that's kind of like a runaway train everywhere nobody's been able to catch up? So sorry to clarify, there are no federal rules. There is actually um, some legislation in Congress now that would enable CPSC, Consumer Product Safety Commission, to establish uh, a timely rule. 
these lithium ion batteries. But but as of now, there's just um, there's no mandatory standard. Um, and unfortunately, it is very difficult and very time consuming for federal safety regulators to create new rules um, for products. Uh, this is unfortunately thanks to an ill conceived law passed by Congress in the 80s. It greatly impedes timely rulemaking. Uh, and the consequences of that is that uh, it means companies put profits over the safety of their consumers in some cases. And um, companies can do this for years before they're actually held accountable. And in the meantime, it's consumers who are paying the price. What about the what about your concerns about the, the shops through it, you know, continuing to do business, especially in your district where it's like it's very densely populated. It's really scary. But, you know, fortunately, uh, there was a major announcement made by Senator Chuck Schumer and Eric Adams that they're going to create uh, new charging location, charging hubs in over 52 nitro properties throughout the five boroughs. Uh, I think it's going to be around 173 different types of stations. So hopefully this will take it out of people's homes and put it in a safe location where they can be charged. Of course, these shops are still going to be popping up left and right until there's more regulation. And I think that's where, you know, whether it's it's my office or constituent on the streets, do a 311 complaint and see if they see something, report it. Um, the mayor also announced that the response time, uh, which typically was within 72 hours, is going to be decreased to maximum 12 hours. And so we're going to have a lot more FDNY officers uh, at these lo locations as quickly as possible. And so we're, we're trying different aspects to make sure that there's a lot more safety, uh, but we have to do a lot more. What I don't understand is, you know, you, you have uh, meat products are, are regulated, you have... Uh food products are, are regulated, chemicals that are used in, you know, household chemicals are, are regulated uh, federally. I mean, pretty much everything that we use, you know, in our daily lives is kind of regulated. So it, it just seems a little crazy that this that this isn't in any way. Right. So actually, um, that's a bit of a misconception. People do assume that products they buy for their home are safe and do meet federal standards. But unfortunately, for a lot of consumer products, that is not the case. Um, I mentioned there was a ill-conceived law passed by Congress in the 1980s. Um, that was an amendment to the Consumer Product Safety Act, which basically requires the Consumer Product Safety Commission to rely primarily on voluntary standards rather than making their own mandatory safety rules. And this hamstrings a lot of brick rulemaking. So people suffer from that. Across the country, too, you say New York City is the canary in the coal mine here. Is this, are, are we unfortunately on the cutting edge of this? We like to be when it's good things and good trends or fun trends, but. Sure. No, absolutely. I just um, think, yes, we are, unfortunately, until either manufacturers step up across the board, change their tune, these bad actors, and, and start abiding by these voluntary standards, um, or we have a safety rule in place that applies to all uh, manufacturers. I think, unfortunately, we're going to keep seeing more events like this, not just in New York. And, and George, there's, there's another aspect of these batteries you want to uh, educate us on. So as we see uh, an increasing number of fires from these batteries, and that means an increasing number of responses for my members, my firefighters, my fire officers, um, we have so many questions about the unknown toxins that are released when these batteries burn. These are all hazardous chemicals, serious carcinogens. Uh, the smoke that comes off these batteries sticks to our gear. Um, as well as exposing all of the civilians and lingering in the house, but it sticks to our gear. That means every time we put our gear on after that, it's going to have some remnants of this carcinogen that's going to dig deeper and deeper into our skin. Um, cancer is a huge problem with the fire service. Uh, we lose more firefighters to cancer every year than anything else. Uh, Sorry, sir. We'd love to understand this better and have some studies done. George, if you a final word, if you had... If you could do anything you wanted to do, your organization and and concern the you know leaders of the fire department like yourself, what would you like to see happen to give you the tools that you guys need? What are those tools that you need, and also to protect your members? Um, we really need more enforcement uh, options. They really need to give us more leverage to in in enforce safety. Um, in the interim, until that happens, maybe uh, it's not a bad idea to go back to a pedal bicycle. Or, um, or strictly, you know, from maybe a best option, the bike share program where somebody else is doing the charging and it's being done outside of the homes uh, might be a good option. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on e-bike safety. 
You can watch it again and share it on our Fox 5 NY YouTube page. Remember, use your mind, it's your best weapon. I'm Lisa Evers. Let's push for peace, love, and justice for all.